Hello, my name is Russell Malley. I'm an adjunct professor in biology at Gavlin. Welcome to this second in a series of short videos focused on the care and use of the microscope. This video focuses on the basic methods of using a microscope. If you have not already familiarized yourself with the parts of the microscope, stop now and watch the first video, Microscope Basics. Microscopes are a valuable and useful tool in biology lab. They are very expensive and delicate. So it's important that as a biology student, you become familiar with the parts and care of the microscopes available to you here at Gaplin College for your biology education. In your biology class, you'll be assigned a particular microscope. You will be responsible for the care and storage of the microscope throughout the semester. Each microscope has a number, as indicated on the base of the microscope, and is stored in a corresponding numbered shelf in the cabinets. The first step to using the microscope is to remove it from its storage cabinet and bring it to your work area. When carrying a microscope, always use two hands. One hand firmly grasping the handle in the back of the arm or frame of the microscope, and the other hand supporting the base. While not in use, the microscope is stored under a dust cover. Remove the dust cover when you're ready to use the microscope. Unwind the power cord and plug it into the socket at the back of your desk. The observation tube should be locked in the forward position. Check that it is locked. If it can rotate, inform the instructor so that it can be locked. Excessive rotation of the observation tube can cause damage to the microscope. Next, turn on the main power switch you should see the light come on. If you do not see the light, check the light intensity knob. It should be set in the middle of the range. Check the aperture iris diaphragm. If it's completely closed, slide the knob to open it. Also check the field iris diaphragm. If it is completely closed, turn the knob to open it. Check that the stage is in the down position. If it is not, use the coarse focus knob to lower the stage. Check that the rotating nose piece is set to use the scanning objective lens. Select your slide. If the slide is dirty, use a Kim wipe to gently clean the slide. Never use the Kim wipes on the microscope lenses. This can cause damage to the lens. Place the slide in the stage clip. Ensure that the slide is flat and secure and that the cover slip is facing up. Adjust the X and Y axis to orient the specimen over the light source. Adjust the ocular interpupillary distance so the image appears as a single circle when you look through the eyepieces. Raise the stage completely using the coarse focus knob. While looking through the oculars, slowly lower the stage until the image is fairly clear using the coarse and then the fine focus knobs. Here are some focusing tips. Move the stage using the X and Y axis knob. If the image moves, then you know you are looking at the slide. If it does not, you are probably focused on the condenser lens. Clean the lenses, both the objective and the oculars. Use only lens paper and a little glass cleaner if necessary. Do not use Kim wipes to wipe any of the microscope lenses. Next, adjust the light intensity. Sometimes clear specimens will be difficult to see if the light intensity is too high, so try dimming the light. If you cannot find the sample on the slide, use the X and Y axis knobs to scan in a grid pattern up and down the slide. Now that you are focused on the scanning lens, you can move to the low power objective lens, the 10X lens. Do not move the stage. Watch the objective lens as you rotate to ensure that it does not bump or scrape against the slide. The specimen should be nearly in focus. Using only the fine focus knob, adjust the focus as necessary. Do not ever use the coarse focus knob on any lens except the scanning objective. If more contrast is desired, adjust the aperture iris diaphragm. As you increase in magnification power, the light will appear less intense. Increase the light intensity as necessary. You may need to adjust the X and Y axis of the slide. Repeat the previous steps to move up to the high power objective, the 40X. Do not move the stage. Watch the objective lens as you rotate to ensure it does not bump or scrape against the slide. The specimen again should be nearly in focus. Using only the fine focus knob, adjust the focus as necessary. Again, do not use the coarse focus knob 
on any lens except the scanning objective lens. If more contrast is desired, adjust the iris aperture diaphragm. As you increase in magnification power, the light again will appear less intense. Increase the light intensity as necessary. You may need to adjust the X and Y axis of the slide. Do not use the 100X oil immersion objective lens without oil immersion. Oil immersion will be covered in the next video, advanced microscopy techniques. When you are finished using the microscope for the day, rotate the revolving nose piece so the scanning objective lens is in place. Lower and move the stage back towards the arm of the microscope. Remove slides and return them to the appropriate slide box. Move the stage back towards the arm using the X and Y adjusters. Wind the cord neatly and then replace the dust cover. It can be difficult to replace the dust covers on these microscopes, so check that the stage has been moved back towards the frame of the microscope. The dust cover does not fit well if the stage is projecting out from the arm of the microscope. Then use two hands to carry the microscope back to the cabinet, one hand in the handle of the frame and one hand in the handle in the base of the microscope. Make sure you replace the microscope in the correctly numbered cabinet space by matching the number on the body of the microscope to the number on the cabinet. Please keep all the microscopes facing the same direction in the cabinet with the number on the microscope facing out so it can be seen. This has been Russell Malley. Thank you for watching this second video on the basic use of the microscope. Come back next time when we cover advanced microscope techniques.